When reset to default settings, CSGO does its best to troll you. It deafens you when you reach the main menu. That's bad enough right there. But the problems continue when you reach the graphics options. For some stupid, stupid reason that there's absolutely no point to, texture filtering is set to trilinear. This is the second worst option available. What this does is, even if your texture detail is set to high, it'll switch them for low quality ones at a distance or when at a steep angle. If you want it to look like 1.6, then this is great. However, I see no point. The performance impact is minimal. Just set it to higher 16 times and leave it at that. But for some other stupid, stupid reason, it ramps MSAA up to eight times and turns FXAA on as well, which is stupid. But why is it stupid? A pixel represents that bit of the screen, but this isn't good enough. Here you can see a scene from CSGO at a low resolution, so the problem is obvious. It's full of jaggies. Horrible, abrupt edges where one thing stops and another begins. The wires look like they've been drawn using paint. The aerials look like random black pixels, some floating in the air. This fence here isn't a fence. It's just a bunch of lines that aren't connected to each other. And these roof tiles here are very unsure of themselves. You get the idea. You can see what things are supposed to be, but they look rough, full of aliasing. That was an example from a proper map but I made a map from hell to show the problem even more clearly. With a high resolution image, it looks fine. But the moment we switch to low resolution, the problem becomes clear. There aren't enough pixels to represent every wire and the gaps between them, so detail is lost. In this case, a lot of the lines disappear entirely. What you need is anti-aliasing. Now this is a fascinating topic. Really, it is. Anti-aliasing has been with us since the 90s. It's been improved generation upon generation. And yet, nobody can agree on which method's best. They all have pros and cons. Some are really, really complicated. Fortunately for you, Global Offensive only uses the simple ones. It's about 10 years behind every other game in this regard. MSAA is the clever kind. Say these red squares are individual pixels, and this black line is what they need to represent. Without anti-aliasing, the pixels can only be black or white. Let's look at this one here, highlighted in yellow. Without anti-aliasing, because the center of the pixel is black, the whole of the pixel is black. But with 2 times MSAA, instead of just by going on what's in the center of the pixel, it tests two different bits and gets the average of those colors. So because one is black and the other is white, the pixel becomes gray, the average of the two. The more of these samples there are, the better the result. Two times multi-sample picks two spots per pixel, four times picks four, and eight times chooses nine. Okay, it's eight. MSAA is full of good stuff, but there are downsides. It doesn't work with transparent textures, like this fence here, or the leaves on the trees. And there's a bit of a performance impact, especially with eight times. But how much MSAA do you need? Four times was always the go-to amount back in the day, and eight times considered overkill. But as your resolution increases, the importance of each pixel goes down. If you're at full HD, I think four times is as much as you'd ever need but you could probably even get away with two times unless you're really into staring at stray pixels. I did a video four years ago now where I discovered that you could see through distant bars better at higher MSAA settings, since it acts like a higher resolution. But in reality, I'd rather have the extra frame rate, and so would drop the MSAA to four times or even two times, depending on what I've had to eat that morning. That's MSAA, demanding, but clean and smart. FXAA, on the other hand, doesn't know what the hell anything is supposed to be, and so blurs it all into oblivion. Seriously, that's all it does. It's called Fast Approximate Anti-Aliasing for a reason. And yeah, it took me a while to find the X in there as well. It looks at the screen, thinks about contrast and depth a bit, and then blurs everything. A human could look at this distant aerial and say, yeah, it's meant to look like this, but FXAA just thinks, these are pixels, and I must blur them. And does this. That's why I don't like FXAA. I mean, sure, it does a good job in some bits, like where the roof meets the sky, but that's only because it lacks intelligence, so blurs everything extensively for good measure. You wouldn't give a photographer praise for applying an Instagram filter, especially not if it's the same one every time. And you wouldn't praise the military for killing a few bad guys if they also bombed a whole city in the process. For the same reasons, don't be impressed by fast approximate anti-aliasing either. But there are uses for it. Firstly, it won't slow down your PC much, and secondly, because it blurs everything, this includes the fences and leaves that MSAA would miss out. And you know what I was saying earlier about anti-aliasing getting less important as the resolution increases? Once you reach 1440p, or in my case, 4K, I actually find that FXAA is all that I need. You still need something, 
But when the pixels are so small and insignificant, rather than to slow my PC down with MSAA, I find that FXAA is just enough to take the edge off. <laughs> but at typical gaming resolutions, I don't find it's good enough. I don't like its unintelligent blur. I find the way it deals with distant lines just as distracting as no anti-aliasing at all. Here it is in motion, so you can see what I mean. Yes, it's blurred, but what has that achieved? But this is where I had an idea. What if we keep them both on? But rather than CSGO's default eight times, we lower the MSAA to two times instead. This way we get much better performance, still have smart anti-aliasing to reduce movement shimmer, and then get the blur applied to that to eliminate any sharp edges that remain, effectively using each anti-aliasing method to soften the other's weaknesses. And you know what? I like it. I would say it's comparable to 8x MSAA in many ways, but will likely run a lot faster on your setup. At any resolution, this may be a good option to try, but at the end of the day it all comes down to personal preference. The sadists among you may prefer the raw, pixelated style of no anti-aliasing at all. Weirdos. Others may want quality no matter what, in which case I suggest turning anti-aliasing off completely and instead looking into DSR or VSR, depending on the type of graphics card you have. But for the rest of us, which I suspect will be the vast majority, I would suggest giving this combination a go. In most maps, I'm happy with how this looks. You can still see the problems in a worst case scenario like this. And when it comes to smoothness while moving, you can never have enough resolution or anti-aliasing. But one last thing which possibly undermines everything I've said up until now. I ran benchmarks under GPU limited conditions to see just how much of a performance impact anti-aliasing would have. We're talking 4K, maximum settings and so on. And here's how my frame rates changed when compared with no anti-aliasing. Yep, I could have FXAA, 4 times MSAA, or my suggested 2 times with FXAA for no performance hit, within a frame or two at most. As in, you might as well enable one of these because they're free to have and 2 times MSAA on its own actually ran 6% faster for some reason. I double checked it and everything. I'm not going to use these results to influence my recommendations in this video, since your PC's results may, and probably will, vary. Benchmark your PC at your settings, see what impact anti-aliasing has, and decide from that. But just remember, you might be able to get anti-aliasing with none of the performance downsides. It's worth checking out. As you can probably tell, I love this topic. Modern games, particularly Rainbow Six Siege, use really clever technology to keep frame rates high and your visuals smooth. PlayStation 4 Pro and Xbox One X both require clever techniques to reach 4K resolutions. And Valve themselves use the same cool stuff to make VR run fast on existing hardware. There's a PDF they made a few years ago about it, which you can check out. Thanks again, Alex. I don't think it's even running on Source at the moment, but maybe these kinds of features could benefit CSGO. Not by adding more detail, but instead by keeping frame rates high, frame times consistent, and jagged edges to a minimum. Download my evil aliasing map to test for yourself in this video's description. And check out my ancient video on anti-aliasing here. If you want to know what CSGO and Left 4 Dead 2 zombies have in common, see this video from last week.